got me this morning. I've come downstairs from the tech booth to, to help you out today at the worship service. Of course, I'm Wayne, you all know that. And um, just before we get started with some announcements, I just want to let you know that we brought a new person onto our tech team. There's Logan Humphreys up there on the sound today. We thank you very much. He's going to periodically come and help us out. And today we've got Brad on camera to, to help around things. And of course, Kate, we uh, looking after uh, PowerPoint and all the rest of it. So that's great. Uh, look forward to upcoming uh, with our technical side. We're going to start installing some cameras. There will be one sitting up there just below that speaker and another one just on the bulkhead underneath the desk. You see we've expanded the desk in two. And those cameras are going to be, um, they're kind of like round. And so they go round and round and round. We can control them up there with a the joystick. So you'll be able to see all down here, all over there, down here. So we're going to do a they're like security cameras. So I, I, I advise Reverend maybe that we would have this up and running by by uh, the time she got back. So we'll be testing that with lovely people, which I know you would be doing great at. Anyway, welcome this morning and uh, to our nice sunny day. It's been beautiful out. And I uh, just want to say hi to uh, all of those on Periscope and on uh, Facebook today, and also those that will join us on YouTube later when we publish it. And uh, many of you are out there, hi, good morning. morning. <laughs> Somebody has been watching our services, so maybe it's Reverend Minnie checking up on us, so that's great. Thanks, Minnie. Um, announcements. Oh, I do have one thing I want to mention. Um, the service on September the 4th won't be at the church, it won't be in the morning. We're going to do a little campfire at my house, and you're all welcome to come at 6.30 in the evening and join us for a campfire service on the 4th. So we'll make some more announcements about that as we come along. Gene, so, you have something. Hi, I'm just wanting to remind people that this afternoon at, from uh, 1 to 4, the Omo family uh, from Syria is, who now live in Port Alberni, are going to be at Williamson Park. So we're encouraged to come and say hello to them and uh, make them welcome. Apparently the two older children are in swimming lessons and just love it. And the baby really wants to get in there with the, uh, the siblings to, to swim. So um, I hope some of you will be able to make it out to Williamson Park. Thank you. Yes, it'd be very interesting to see how they're adapting to, to a new life. So, welcome. Any other announcements? Okay, we'll start with birthdays, and I imagine Doug has something to say. <laughs> how many you got today, Doug? Just two. Just two? Hey, I understand you brought some, uh, some of your grandkids with you today, too. Yeah, there are two of them back there. Two of the 13. Two of the 13. Well, welcome, grand, great grandchildren. Great grandchildren. Uh, father in laws on Thursday, mm -hmm. 89. Wow. And I got a niece on Tuesday. And, uh, she'll be 32 because she doesn't live here, so she doesn't know what I said. Uh, <laughs> she'll probably catch it on the uh, YouTube. <laughs> Any other birthdays? Yes. It's my husband's birthday this coming Wednesday. Uh, another good year. Anybody else? Up top, down below. Oh, hello, Anne. Hi, Mars. Younger son is 40. Your youngest son is 40. Oh my goodness. I didn't know you had them so old. <laughs> they must have started. Yeah. Jared. Jared. Our son Ryan is with Jacqueline. We're celebrating your 11th anniversary Excellent. on the 20th. Excellent. Which brings us to anniversaries. Yes. Anniversaries. Any? Any? None. Well, on that note, I guess we'll sing.
morning, of course, we would like to acknowledge the traditional territories of the Newtonoff First Nations and respect the land on which we gather this morning. Hesuka Sawak. Everything is one. Everything is one. We'll have our welcome prayer. Why not shoot the nuns? Creator, guide me through my day. Creator, guide me through my day. We we katha. We we katha. My is Lucas. My is Lucas. For you I can't tell. We shall not. We shall not. Sit up, Dave. Sit up, Dave. Watch over my health. Watch over my health. Pasuk aha. Pasuk aha. Protect my surroundings. We'll bow in prayer. Lord, may your goodness and love be present among us today. Come, bless our gathering with unity, hope, vision. Lord, we pray for unity. Build in us all a deep respect for one another so that we may be as one people. Lord, we pray for hope. Come stir your hope within our hearts and renew our faith. Lord, we pray for vision. May your vision fill our lives as we seek to reveal your love. We ask all this in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, our call to worship today is responsive. As we gather this day, each one of us brings something to worship. We bring prayers of hope, and prayers of anguish. Happy are those who find a way and follow that path. We bring our faith, tattered or whole as it may be. Blessed are those who give their lives over to their Creator. In faith, in trust, with hope, let us worship God. And we'll sing, Spirit, open my heart as more voices, 79 will be on the screen.
May we pray. Our Heavenly Father and Mother, we come before you this day with thanks for helping us through another week, for having the freedom and opportunity to come and worship here, to bring to you our worries and concerns, our accomplishments and joy. We thank you for being a steady friend who is with us always in good times and bad. We ask that you would open our hearts and minds as you speak to us through scripture, song, and voice. May we be blessed and in turn be a blessing to others. May your love shine through us in practical ways and actions. Help us to keep our focus on you, building our faith, our strength, and our hope. Amen. And we're going to sing a, a goodie but goodie, what a friend we have in Jesus, and we could be stamped.
There were toy animals, giraffes with long necks, teddy bears with almost no necks at all, and even a baby elephant. Then there were dolls, dolls with blue eyes and yellow curls, dolls with brown eyes and brown bobbed heads, and the funniest little toy clown you ever saw. And there were cars full of toy engines, airplanes, tops, jack knives, picture puzzles, books, and every kind of thing boys or girls could want. Lots of wonderful toys there. But that was not all. <coughs> Some of the cars were filled with all sorts of good things for boys and girls to eat. Big golden oranges, red-cheeked apples, bottles of creamy milk for their breakfast, fresh spinach for their dinners. Mmm, how good. Do you, do you like spinach? Yeah? It's good, isn't it? Especially raw. Peppermint drops and lollipops were after meal treats. I think maybe a lot of people would prefer that. The little train was carrying all these wonderful things to the good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain. She popped along narrowly. Then all of a sudden, she stopped with a jerk. She simply could not go another inch. She tried and tried, but her wheels would not turn. What were all those good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain going to do without the wonderful toys to play with and the good food to eat? Uh oh, what do you think is going to happen? said the funny little clown who jumped out of the train. Let us ask him to help us. So all the, toys, all the dolls and toys cried out together. Please, shiny new engine, won't you please pull our train over the mountain? Our engine has broken down, and the boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. But the shiny new engine smarted. I pull you. I am a passenger engine. I have just carried a fine big train over the mountain with more cars than you ever dreamed of. My train had sleeping cars with comfortable berths, a dining car where waiters bring whatever hungry people want to eat, and parlor cars in which people sit in soft armchairs and look out of big plate glass windows. I pull the likes of you, indeed not. That sounds like a pretty smallish engine. Not very nice. And off he steamed to the roundhouse where engines live when they are not busy. How sad the little train and all the dolls and toys felt. Then the little clown called out. The passenger engine is not the only one in the world. Here is another engine coming, a great big strong one. Let us ask him to help us. The little toy clown waved his flag and the big strong engine came to a stop. See the clown waving the flag? and toys together. Won't you please pull our train over the mountain? Our engine has broken down and the good little boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. But the big strong engine bellowed. I am a freight engine. I have just pulled a big train loaded with big machines over the mountain. These machines print books and newspapers for grown-ups to read. I am a very important engine indeed. I won't pull the likes of you. Uh -oh. And the freight train, freight engine, huffed off indignantly to the roundhouse. 
The little train and all the dolls and toys were very sad. Cheer up, cried the little toy clown. The freight engine is not the only one in the world. Here comes another. He looks very old and tired. But our train is so little, perhaps he can help us. So the little toy clown waved his flag and the dingy, rusty old engine stopped. Please, kind engine, cried all the dolls and toys together. Won't you please pull our train over the mountain? Our engine has broken down and the boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. I wonder what that one's going to say, eh? What do you think that poor old engine's going to say? No idea. <laughs> <sighs> but the rusty old engine sighed. I am so tired. I must rest my weary wheels. I cannot pull even so little a train as yours over the mountain. I cannot. I cannot, I cannot. And off he rumbled to the roundhouse chugging. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. Then indeed the little train was very, very sad and the dolls and toys were ready to cry. I'm all lined up there looking so sad, eh? What's going to happen next? But the little clown called out, Here is another engine coming, a little blue engine, a very little one. Maybe she will help us. The very little engine came chug chugging merrily along. When she saw the toy clown's flag, she stopped quickly. There we go. Must be the two spot. <laughs> <laughs> what is the matter, my friends? She asked kindly. Oh, little blue engine, cried the dolls and toys. Will you pull us over the mountain? Our engine has broken down and the good boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat, unless you help us. Please, please help us, little blue engine. I'm not very big, said the little blue engine. They use me only for switching trains in the yard. I have never been over the mountain. But we must get over the mountain before the children awake, said all the dolls and the toys. The very little engine looked up and saw the tears in the doll's eyes, and she thought of the good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain who would not have any toys or good food unless she helped. Then she said, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. And she hitched herself to the little train. The train with a positive attitude. <coughs> She tugged and pulled and pulled and tugged, and slowly, slowly, slowly they started off. Oh, look at the gold in The toy clown jumped aboard, and all the toy dolls and the toy animals began to smile and cheer. Here they go. Puff, puff, chug, chug went the little blue engine. I think I can. 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 Up, up, up. Faster and faster and faster and faster the little engine climbed. until at last they reached the top of the mountain. It's like they made it.
down in the valley lay the city. Hooray! Hooray! cried the funny little clown and all the dolls and toys. The good little boys and girls in the city will be happy because you helped us, kind little blue engine. Nice deep hill for that train to be going down. I hope it has good brakes. <laughs> And the little blue engine smiled and seemed to say as she puffed steadily down the mountain, I thought I could, 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 I thought I could. Coming down the mountain. Our first scripture reading this morning is uh, from the book of Psalm, and it's a responsive reading, and also it has a refrain, and uh, Ellen's going to give us a little, little idea how that sounds. Shepherd of Israel, hear us. Luke 12, chapters 49 and 56. 
I came to set the world earth on fire, and how I wish I were already kindled. I have a baptism to receive, and how distressed am I until it's over. Do you suppose that I came to bring peace to the world? No, not peace, but division. From now on, my a family of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. Fathers will be against their sons and their sons against their fathers. Mothers will be against their daughters and daughters against their mothers. Mothers-in-law will be against daughters-in-law and daughters-in-law against their mothers-in-law. Jesus also said to the people, when you see a cloud coming in the west, at once you say it's going to rain, and it does. And when you feel the south wind blowing, you say that it's going to get hot, and it does. Hypocrites. You can look at the earth and the sky and predict the weather. Why then don't you know the meaning of the present time? The next reading is from Hebrews. And the writer of Hebrews is reminding the people that faith has helped their forebears in the past, encouraged them then and us now, that holding on to faith will carry them forward and strengthen them. Hebrews 11. It was faith that made the Israelites able to cross the Red Sea, as if on dry land when the Egyptians tried to do it. The water swallowed them up. It was faith that made the walls of Jericho fall down after the Israelites had marched around for seven days. It was faith that kept the prostitute Rahab from being killed with those who disobeyed God, for she gave the Israel spies a friendly welcome. Should I go on? There isn't enough time for me to speak of Gideon, Barak, Salmon, Samson, sorry, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Through faith they fought whole countries and won. They did what was right and received what God had promised. They shut the mouths of lions put out fierce fires, escaped being killed by the sword. They were weak, but became strong. They were mighty in battle and defeated the armies of foreigners. Through faith, women received their dead relatives raised back to life. Others refusing to accept freedom died under torture in order to be raised to a better life. Some were mocked and whipped and others were put in chains and taken off to prison. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed by the sword. They went around clothed in skins of sheep and goats, poor, persecuted, and ill-treated. The road was not good enough for them. They wandered like refugees in the deserts and the hills, living in caves and holes in the ground. What a record all of these would have won by their faith, yet they did not receive what God had promised, because God had an even better plan for us. His purpose was that only in company with us, would they be made perfect. As for us, we have this large crowd of witnesses around us. So then let us rid ourselves of everything that gets in the way, and of the sin which holds to us so tightly, and let us run with determination the race that lies before us. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from beginning to end, he did not give up because of the cross. On the contrary, because of the joy that was waiting for him. He thought nothing of disgrace by dying on the cross. And he is now seated at the right hand of God's throne. And we nice of you. Rise and sing. Him, Spirit, Spirit of gentleness.
Thank you for being here today and thank you for being patient with me. So, my reflection today is, you know, dealing with some pretty tough scripture today for us to be thinking about. But I'm going to start with a story. When I was a child, um, it was common in the summertime for our family to go for a dip at the Meal Dam, usually when my folks, my parents came home from work, either before dinner for a quick cooling off dip or after dinner for a cooling off dip before bedtime. It was a way to refresh and, and it was a good time to have some family time together having fun. And uh, my parents encouraged my sister, my brother, and myself uh, to practice our swimming skills to the best of our ability. And I have to say, they made it fun. And now, um, I've never been a strong swimmer, and, uh, but I love the water. And I always looked at the far shore with longing, you know, over there, just over there. It doesn't look that far, just over there. And my folks would say, it's further than it looks. <laughs> Just so I can swim over there. I want to swim over there. So when I was about, I don't know, 13, thereabouts, um, he figured um, that myself and my sister, who's just a year younger than I am, that we were ready to swim over there. And so, uh, yeah, he figured we were prepared enough to swim to the other side, have a little rest, and then swim back. So with him right there beside us and encouraging us, we made it to the other side, no problems. It's like, yes, this is cool. We did it. On the way back, though, I started getting tired. My strokes were becoming slower, and it took more effort to keep swimming. Even, over there, even though in the summertime it can seem very gentle, there is a current there, and you want to get back to the same shore you started from. So I knew I had no choice but to keep on going. And so when I was near, the very near actually, to the shore, but still over my head, I thought I couldn't go any further. And of course, um, my father was right there encouraging both myself and my sister, you can do it, you can do it. Um, and uh, I, wasn't, I knew I wasn't supposed to stop swimming until my hands actually scraped the shore because uh, as it was pointed out to me, many people have drowned and they're so close to shore they figure they can stand up. And as soon as they stand up, oops, it's still over their head and they have no more energy. If they're that close, they don't think it. So I knew I had to feel the ground under my hands. So I had to pull some inner strength from deep inside me to keep going because I was tuckered out. And um, with that encouragement, um, beside me, I kept going, and wow, when I got on shore, that sense of accomplishment, um, you know, I had a towel wrapped around me, and I, I swam there, and I swam back. I did it. I did it. How many times have we either experienced or witnessed in others that drawing of inner strength to push beyond what we thought we were capable of. I enjoy watching on TV, um, I don't know how many of those of you know, Ninja Warriors. And what it is, is athletes who do these incredibly difficult obstacle courses. And you can see on their faces them drawing their inner strength to pull through and do this. They're quite the athletes. And I find it very interesting. And if they don't make it through, they end up falling because a lot of it is above ground, their obstacles. And if they can't hold on, they fall into a pool of water. <coughs> so all around the world, from here, right here in the sanctuary amongst us today, um, in this building to the Middle East, from one pole to the other, there are people actually going through such difficult trials 
that we view it as an amazing trait of humanity, that utter will to go on no matter what. Sometimes we wonder how they get through it, how they survive it. What do they, those athletes, those at the Olympics, those that are going through such trials and tribulations in their own lives, what do they all have in common? Faith. Faith that they can surmount whatever is keeping them back from reaching their goal. That goal can be as simple as trying to win a trophy or as grim as trying to survive a brutal war being made, being uh, waged in their own backyard. In Hebrews, we are reminded of many who overcame their struggles, their fears, and the walls placed before them. In each instance, faith got them through it. Today's text reminds us that by faith, God's people not only ventured into the unknown, but they also did some amazing things against the odds. The inclusion of Rahab suggests that people who live by faith are not always who we think they may be. Rahab is both a foreigner and a prostitute, yet by her faith she risked her own life to save the lives of others. In doing so, her life was spared. The community for which Hebrews was originally written is believed to have faced some serious prosecution. The writer encourages the people of God to hold fast. They persevered against the odds to the very end and encourage us to do the same. This is not a solo race, but a journey the community of faithful travel together. That's you and me today. Not in competition, but in a spirit of collaboration and encouragement. These words encourage a community that is ready to persevere, not through examples of those who received the promise, but because of those who persevered in faith against the odds. They are the ones who become mentors today, who seek justice, act kindly, endure hardship, even death, because their faith in God looks toward a world made new. Our faith in God can be directly related to the faith we have in ourselves, knowing, you know, that God has faith in us. We know our faith in God, knowing He has faith in us. The circle. It's like that, or I, as I like to think of it, um, a special knot in our own rope that, you know, our fabric of life, in our own rope that makes us stronger, that knot, and helps us to get through those tight, tight spots in our lives. As the metaphor of the race in the passage from Hebrews implies, choosing faithfulness is neither easy nor passive. It can be demanding and often requires change and growth. In Luke 12, um, Jesus describes the costs of discipleship in terms of divisions it may cause. How do we react around people who don't seem to get our anxieties? We might be anxious about the plight of refugees or climate change. Well, they might focus on how best to sort the laundry or how to clean up the tools in the workshop. How patient can we be? Even families may be divided by different understandings of what it means to be faithful. These conflicts can arise as believers reorder priorities, reshape behaviors, and rethink goals. The way of faith prepares us for the coming of God's dominion, but it also breaks well-worn rules of expectations in our lives as we seek to become the people God calls us to be. 
Who does God call us to be? Well, we are called to be patient and kind with each other. We are to have faith. We are also to accept the possibility of not being the coolest on the block <laughs> uh, for attending to our faith. In the past, everyone in a household seemed that they had to possess the same faith. But no. We are free to worship God as we, as we see fit. We are all assured of God's saving grace. Rick Hansen is a name I'm sure you are all familiar with. And he, so can I step away? He was once a young, able-bodied man with a bright future. And then he suffered a tragic accident. That was the beginning of his story. He had to adjust to life in a wheelchair. But, you know what? He had faith that he could lead a good life. And he had a great faith that he could travel the world in his wheelchair to raise money and awareness for spinal cord injuries and raise money for therapies and cures. He believed, he believed he could do it, and do it, he did. His faith gave encouragement and inspiration to many. I know his um, stories definitely touched me, and I know others. So sometimes we just want to give up. You know, a task is really difficult. Maybe we think we are being punished. Or perhaps we feel that the world is out to get us. The letter to the Hebrews dares to say, yes, bad things happen. They have always happened. Yet even through these things, God is with us. Always. People persevere against the odds. You can too. I want us to go from here knowing that with that faith, we can just grab onto that. And faith gives us hope that, and that knowledge that we can get through it. Just like that little engine that could, I think I can. I think I can. I thought I could, and you did. And that that message, like well, reading those scriptures and taking from that, is that knowing that, yes, we can. Thank you. We're going to stand and uh, sing um, a hymn, uh, I Have Called You By Your Name, or Voices 161 will be up there, so those that can stand or Give us a chance to talk again.
And today I'm going to ask that you uplift in your hearts those that uh, you're thinking about um, that maybe have, uh, are going through difficult times in their lives, either through illness or other circumstances, and also to uplift in your hearts and uh, celebrate the good things that are going on around us and in your lives and in, and in the lives of our loved ones as we pray. Keep that in mind. Oh, Holy One, we thank you that we stand in a long line of believers who have been faithful through the ages. You have been leading your people through trial and difficulty and have always set before them hope for today and hope for a better tomorrow. We pray that you would bless us in our time as we seek to be faithful as our forebears. May we, too, know the faith which is filled with hope in things not seen. Give to us a faith like the grain of mustard seed which had small beginnings but which yielded large results. Give to us the faith to remove the mountains of difficulty which come to each of us. Give to us the faith that sees a distant goal and is willing to work to achieve it. Give to us a faith which has a vision of a new world where peace and love characterize the transactions of people and of nations and where war is no more. Give to us a faith to move forward, not knowing our destination, but trusting in your guiding providence. Give to us a faith which is able to endure those moments of personal disquiet and to trust that you are with us. Give to us a faith which sees the welfare of humankind as our business, because it is the focus of your enduring love for your people. Give to us a faith which sees beyond the years to an eternal city. God, give us faith to walk with you through the ebb and flow and the victories and the defeats of life and to achieve victory and mastery of life. Amen.
restored. We ask that you will take these gifts we have given today to use to help others and further your ministry to all the people. Amen. May as well stay standing. We're going to sing another hymn. Thank you. 